Welcome back to another edition of my shorts right here at the ranch here. It's probably a poor excuse for a rolled lucky strike because it's all I got. And making do and saving money and doing things and stuff. And solving the world's problems one slow inhale to a time. Well, it's been one of them Monday fun days for me. Uh, I woke up too damn early. You got too many things to do and did them all. And uh, I've been sitting on my butt the last couple of hours because... I finished all my chores, and I've been doing the things and becoming better prepared and, you know, doing the stuff. You know, I just don't always talk about doing the stuff. <laughs> but I was watching uh, Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, one of the few holiday movies I will voluntarily sit through. And at the end of it, he kind of has that rant at his boss. And uh, my dad had one of those epic fucking Christmas rants one year that was, like, way not safe for work. And it's actually kind of a fun story. So, stay tuned. Now, I was probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. It was a long time ago. Definitely over 20 years ago. Uh, it's back when the old man was still spry and lucid and, you know, still working and whatnot. And, you know, he worked hard his whole life and uh, he fucking hated the holidays. And the reason why he hated the holidays is because, one, it was cold and dark outside, and it made him hurt and made him crazy. But number two is because the women in my family are fucking obsessed with Christmas. Now, no judgment here, man. If you like the holidays, good on you. But don't force other people to validate your mental illnesses or participate against their will. <coughs> and my mother has been this way. I love Mama, but I fucking hate the way she gets this time of year. <laughs> like for me, uh, the holidays were drinking too much with dad and having a good time and <coughs> oh, and hack up my guts smoking a cigarette and, you know, watching old movies and just having fun, you know. <laughs> my mother, on the other hand, is completely fucking obsessed with dinners and presents and fucking trees and ornaments and decorations. And... My mother used to go full-blown. She, she fucking, I mean, bull, bull goose fucking loony. She had a specific time and a date you put the tree up, a specific time and a date you put the tree down, specific ways and protocols to decorate this damn thing. It used to be a real tree until my dad finally threw a goddamn fit about it. Then it switched to a fake tree with tinsel. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the tinsel fetish with my mother started, oh, I want to say the first year they were married. They were actually living in Pocatello by my aunt, because my dad had a job, and he had to move out of town for it. And it was cold. It was goddamn cold. It was like 20, 30 degrees below zero on Christmas Eve in Pocatello, man. And my mom was in nurse's training still. Uh, you know, she's pregnant with my oldest sister, uh... And what happened is, they were broke. And I, I don't mean I work at Walmart and I make no goddamn money broke. I mean, they were as broke as I was when I was fucking homeless, maybe broker. You know. They had a kid on the way, just freshly married. My dad just had a job while he was trying to get a better job. Uh, you know, he was drinking his troubles away like most men do. Uh, they were in a house, and it was colder than fuck because the heat had went out, so they were using the oven to keep warm, right? And my mom figured out that they could have soda crackers with frosting on it for Christmas dinner because they didn't have any fucking food, okay? So this was pretty bad. And just right when, you know, you thought things couldn't get any fucking worse, my Aunt Jean showed up bringing a tree, decorations to put on the tree, some tinsel, which I'll get into here, that's why the mom has the tinsel fetish, and presents. Now, my Aunt Jean was one of those people that, like, she was cool to everybody, and, like, nobody in life fucking hated her. And that's probably one of the reasons why, after she died and Lance did those things to her body, that I, I did horrible things to Lance with some of my old business associates that would probably make you think less of me as a human being. I really don't fucking care. <laughs> but, she, like, when I'd go down and visit Aunt Jean and stuff, you know, or my sisters would or whatever, uh, she'd, like, put a $50 bill or something in your pillowcase and a note that says, don't, you know, 
take this out until you're at least 100 miles from here. Because the rule was in the car, you know, like once you're 100 miles past wherever, you ain't going back for it, even if it's your fucking nitroglycerin for your heart. Like, that's just not having it. Right? <clears throat> so, you fast forward from 1967 to like the mid to late 90s or the early 2000s, Dad had had enough of Christmas, okay? Like, the Jingle Bell shit got out of control. It got to where he would make up his own song, like, you know, Oh Come All Ye Faithful, he'd go, Oh, oh Come In The Faithful, and, and carry on from there. Things became quite out of hand. <clears throat> My mom just went fucking crazy for the holidays. And we used to alternate, like, whose house we did that. Like, one year we'd do it at our house for Christmas dinner, the big old fucking Christmas dinner fights, you know, of old were epic. They were great. I do kind of miss that. Uh, they'd be at my house one year and at Margaret's house the next year. And we alternated. And finally, when Uncle Calvin started getting sick, you know, we didn't do it anymore. Because everybody was getting old, man. But this was the year that Christmas dinner was at our house. And by this point in the day, Dad had had enough of the goddamn jingle bells. Everything was driving him crazy. I I'd had enough, and I was a kid, man. I fucking did my best to hide from other people. <sighs> like, most of how I spent Christmas usually was drinking and smoking pot in my room. And uh, hiding from everybody. Of course, the cool relatives are coming in like, hey, man. What you got burning there? Uh, nothing? So, yeah, give me a hit of that nothing, bro. I'm getting hungry. I want me some dinner, right? And, of course, my dad wanders. What are you doing, you little bastard? You know, everybody put the joint away, like, mm, doing nothing. He's like, give me some of that, you fucking greedy hog. And people are like, whew, you know. And we all show up to dinner fucking drunk and stoned, right? And we are having a good fucking time. Well, this year was not like that. You know, I was like 10 or 12, so the stoned thing wasn't into it. Now, I had been drinking because, you know, like, it's Christmas Day, and my dad had fun rules about when you could and could not drink. And uh, usually a little bit of the old Dutch courage, right, for dealing with the relatives. Now, I always loved seeing my relatives and shit, but there's a reason why we did this once a fucking year. Okay, these people are crazy. So this house is crowded, full, everybody's just fucking being noisy. Dad and I were hiding in the office and uh, smoking cigarettes and watching The Great Escape like we did every fucking Christmas morning. And of course, noisy fire truck noises, you know, shout out to Tomcat telling the fire department to go fuck themselves, there's no fire here. And yes, I checked in my shorts, nothing's on fire there either. At least for right now, I don't know, time will tell. And this is at the point where my mom has just gone full bull goose loony with the goddamn singing Christmas ornaments, everything else. And finally, my dad stands up, and he's going outside to have a cigarette, and my mom's like, where are you going? It's all time for dinner. And he just fucking snaps. He says, God damn it, you and that fucking bing bong Mickey Mouse goddamn Christmas bullshit. And fucking psychotic singing noises, that shit hurts my teeth, makes my ears hurt. You should go into town. I mean, I had... Heard a few of them John Belushi speeches from him growing up over the years, like, you know, when the Germans, or when the Japs bomb Pearl Harbor, you know, or whatever. You know, I might go watch Animal House later, because why the fuck not? But, I mean, this was an epic old man rant. And finally, by the end of this, everybody's standing there speechless, and he proudly lights his damn cigarette in the house, which was a no-no on Christmas Day walks outside and proceeds to pull a bottle out of his bucket and sit on the step and enjoy his victory. And it all started, the whole thing, because my mother wanted him to participate in the tree decorating stuff a few weeks earlier and he wouldn't do it. She was still riding his nuts about it. And, and my old man hated tinsel. Like, he fucking despised the stuff because it gets in everything and you cannot get it out for, like, months and finally, he used his powers as a salty old man to ban the activity. Which, I mean, you know, I can understand both points of view on it. But uh, after that day, um, my old man did not actually have to participate in the whole tree ceremony anymore. Instead, it became a de facto Joe job. One of those lovely jobs that, you know, young men hide in their room and drink away. 
and uh, pretend uh, that they're busy sleeping or uh, try and be elsewhere when they're delegated because I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll never forget that old man. He had steam coming out of his ears, man. He His fucking mustache just about lit on fire. He was that mad. And it's just a little thing that fucking set him off. That was probably one of the funniest goddamn things I had ever seen him do at a holiday function. Like, he flat out, he's basically saying, fuck you, 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 fuck you. Because there are a lot of people to tell fuck you. And he goes, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And he pointed at the dog, which at that point I had golden retrievers, uh, female golden retrievers. You know, because I was a kid and I didn't have the Rufus yet because he wasn't a thing. And, uh, you know, he gets telling everybody, fuck you and whatnot. And he'd get through about 50 people without dropping a beat. Like, this is the most lyrical swearing I'd ever heard in my life. Like, this rant probably was one of the turning points or stepping stones in my pivotal young developed mind. <laughs> like hearing a drunken, salty old man tell everybody to fuck off in the tune of A minor. You know, it was just, it was one of those moments that you had to really be there to soak in. And that is one of my happiest holiday memories, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, I might do more holiday-related videos as the mood strikes my fancy. You know, I always like getting my fancy tickled. The problem is, is, uh, you know, just like when your second wife uh, dresses in a schoolgirl outfit and you know something is up and they have foul intent and ill will planned and they tell you, it's okay, it's okay, dear, you can pull out, you know, in Spanish because they didn't speak a goddamn word of English. Well, I, I don't think she did, although I wonder about that. <laughs> and then proceeds to do the Polish leg hold on you and, and until it's, you know, you just can't get away and it's too late. And then you've both had the time of your life, and yet you're fucking terrified because she's not on birth control, and you ain't wearing a condom. F fun yet terrifying experience, and that's kind of the way it was when Dad started yelling at people. And uh, I miss the salty old fucker. So now, when the relatives get on people's nerves, i.e. mine, it's my job to be a naughty boy and tell them all to fuck off in the tuna A minor. And if you made it to the end of this video, uh, tell me your favorite holiday stories about epic rants. Because, uh, you know, it, it makes the season the reason, man. And as always, if you like the video, like the video. And if you don't, eat my salty old shorts. I'm going to go watch a movie.